hello guys welcome back to my sewing corner welcome to my channel if you are new here you are very much welcome thank you for stopping by and thank you for clicking on this video and please don't forget to click on the red subscribe button and also click the bell beside it to get notifications of new videos from me okay so today without wasting time i'm going to be showing us how to make a kimono jacket with that okay because i want it to be more shaped i want to give it more shape and more fitting okay and this is the uh, ankara print i'll be using and i'll also be using this fabric interfacing okay and i'll be using this lining as well okay and the measurements you will need As you can see here, I've marked some points. I'm going to explain. Here is my starting line. Here is my chest line. From here to here is my armhole depth. From here to here is my bust point. From here to here is on the bust starting line. So this point is my hips line. And from that starting line as well to the base of my gown. Let me just shift my camera. This is where my gown or my kimono dress will end. This is the length. So this is the turning in allowance. Okay, that I'm giving it. So I'm just going to fold it in like this. And attach my lining to this point so I'm going to just add half inch to the allowance length to the lining length okay that I'll use to join this space and I'll continue the measurement okay so without wasting time let's just get started at the center I'm just going to mark one inch there so that is going to be my new center so you can go ahead and mark that one inch to the base of your gown if you know it will confuse you I'm just going to mark it on the prominent part okay so that by the time I'm taking my measurements, I will not forget this point. So the next thing I will do is to take my shoulder measurements from that one inch allowance that I gave. Okay. So my shoulder measurement is eight inches plus half inches. You know, it's not a stretchy material. That is what eight point five, and I'll come down by one inch shoulder slope. Okay. Same thing, I'll measure 8.5 on my chest line so that I can draw a straight line. I can connect the lines. <clears throat> now, go ahead and connect the lines like this. Okay, I hope you can all see that. Then, I'll find the midpoint of this line that should be left with 9 inches. Can you see? Then, our midpoint is about 4.5. Now, I'll come in by three quarter inch okay so that i can connect my i can draw my armhole curve okay neck width i want to use so to make it more firm i'm going to be working with four inches and you come to this place as well i measure four inches okay so i'll connect my shoulder slope then half inch join shoulder joining Okay, so the next thing to do is take my boss circumference or my circumference measurements. Sorry, so I'll come over to this is my boss point. Take my boss circumference divided by four, so and I have 12 inches. Okay, then I'll be using my under bust as the reference point 10 inches. So I'll come over to the hip line here and I'll take my hip measurement divided by four as well okay so you can go ahead and connect it okay now depending on how you want it you can decide to give it just one inch allowance but I'm going to go ahead and give it one inch on all the sides So the next thing to do, okay, so you connect your hammer cuff to that bust measurement, then I'll connect it just, I'll just make a straight connection to the base of the gown, okay? As you can see, this is where my hip measurement stopped. So I'll just make a straight connection to the hip measurement. I don't want an hip line, okay? So I'll still curve that part again. So, just to make this place more curved, I'll come and place my curved, the curved part of my ruler on it. Okay, so that is what, so you can see the base of my gown 
just straight up to the point okay so now the next thing to do is now cut the center of the jacket you come to this neck waist that we marked you know i said i'm going to be using my underbust as a reference point so from this my neck width i'll just place my ruler like this can you see and i'm just going to connect it so i'll make it straight up to the hip line after the hip line i'll come and give it some shaping okay you can see that i just came in like this just to connect it to that point okay so that that extreme hand will not be open okay so i close i connect i made it curve like that okay okay now so let's now insert our darts okay because i want my kimono jacket to have my to have darts okay so from the hip line i'll come up by two inches now this is the hip line so i'll come up by two inches but first and first now this is our center line this one hinge that we marked earlier so i'll mark my bust pan okay five inches my bust pan is actually nine inches divided by two is 4.5 plus half inch allowance so i'll mark my bust pan all the way to one inch below my bust point okay so i'm still going to mark the one inch below the, so you come here and you mark your one inch below the bust point okay also two inches above the heat line okay that's where that will get to so i'll just go ahead and connect the lines okay so here i have 13 inches for the length of my darts or almost 13 inches so the midpoint is what 6.5 which ideally should fall on my half length if i was using the half length okay but of course i'm not using the half length so, so i'll just at this midpoint i'll go out by three quarter inch you can use 0 0.5 your body size is smaller than mine the measurement is smaller than mine okay then i'll connect this measurement together for my dart so this is my dart then i'll come to this point here and i'm going to return back what i have taken so that we don't have shortage so this is where it is and i took 1.5 inches there okay so at the bust point I'm, i know i'm going to have roughly like one inch so i'll add one inch or so okay so i'll just connect it to the hip line like so can you see just to give it the return what i have taken go ahead and cut it so you can see what it looks like please remember to fold in your hemming allowance okay Let me open it up so that I can see what it looks like. So for the back bodies, as you can see, I've marked out my prominent parts or my um, lines, okay? My vertical measurements, I mean. Then I'll come here and take my shoulder measurement, 8.5 from the center. I can see that there's no allowance here. So I'll just mark 8.5 for my shoulder line. And I'll come down by 1 inch. Okay? So the same thing I'll mark on my chest line so that I can connect it. Okay. So then I'll find the midpoint so I'll be able to connect my ammo curve. So my my mid the midpoint should be 4.5. Okay. Then I'll just connect my ample. For the back, you don't have to give it any hollow. Then I'll mark my bust measurement. My bust point. Underbust. So I'm going to be using the underbust as the reference point. Okay. Then my hips measurement divided by four. Okay. So 
I'll just connect it. So if you want to give it one inch like we did for the front, go ahead and give it one inch. Give all of them one inch. Okay. So from that one inch on the hip line, I'm just go straight to the base of the gown. Okay, so just to make this place more curved. Okay, then I will insert my dart. So from the dart, you come to you measure two inches above your hip line. So. Let me first mark out five inches. Five inches, which is my bust pan. Okay, that's allowance included. Now this will get to the chest line. Okay. So from the hip line, I'll come up by two inches. Then I'll connect the lines. So for the back, I'm not going to find the midpoint. You know what I'm going to do? I'll just measure what my half length is from the under bust, okay? Which is what I took for the front. So that's what I'm going to use as my dart, my dart shaping. Then I'll measure three quarter inch to both sides of that. I hope we can all see it, okay? Then I'll connect it. Then I'll return what I have taken. So I took one and a half at this point. I'm just going to give it back. So at the boss point, I must have taken one inch. Then you know, it goes to my chest line. So I'll just give my chest line to like half inch. Okay. Now to my, my boss point, right? This is the hunter bust. So I'll just give this like half inch. Of course, that will extend to the chest line. You know? Okay. So, it did not get to the hip line, so I will just connect it like so. Can you see? Okay, it's supposed to even come this way. Okay. Okay, so that's it. That's it for the shaping. Okay, then for the neckline, so remember I used four inches for the neck width for the front. Use the same neck width. And then for the neck depth, just go with 1.5. Okay, you don't want it to be too deep, you need a jacket. Then you connect it like so. So I'm calling my shoulder slope. Then my shoulder joining allowance. Okay, so now you're good to cut. And see the center of my back bodies okay Cut the lining what you're going to do okay as you have seen me do what you do is to place your fabric on your lining so this is the top of my fabric as you can see so after you have done that okay then you come to the base you can see this is where my gown length ends but this is an extension so I'm just going to fold in that extension so my line will start from this point this cross check to be sure that this is, you are folded in what you have so that you don't have shortage. I said I'm going to be using a fabric face. So I'll just go ahead and measure half of my shoulder line here. I have about five inches here, so that's 2.5. Okay, that is where my facing will start from. So I'll just trace what I have. This is where my facing will stop for the gown. You can see my gown still extends, but at this point, that's past the hip line. Okay. Because this is where the image where the hip line is. This is where the hip line is. You can see. So this is where my facing will stop. So I'm just going to use a pencil or marker to trace it out. So that you see. So I'm just going to measure four inches from here. Okay. Then I'll connect the four inches to the two 
and a half that I have here. I measure four inches to the base as well. So this is what I have for my face and, and let me lay it on the fabric that you see what it looks like. So it's a fusible interfacing that means you're going to need your iron for it. So the wrong side of your fabric I'm going to stick it on the wrong side okay and then you just stick it with your iron so for you you can decide to just make yours to get the length of your gown so that would be the best thing if you want to get the best of it but i'm just going to manage this like this so. the same thing for the other side. The next thing to do is to turn the lining. Okay, so the first place to turn, I've placed my lining on it. But the first place to actually turn is your the, the, the base of your gown. So what you do is to place the base of your lining also on it. So make sure the sides of your fabric and the side of your lining have lines. That is very very important. Once you've cross checked that, just place it together like this. So I'll go ahead and put a stitch on it. But before then, so after sewing it, you come to the neckline. Okay. You can see that this is the way it is. So you come to the neckline. At that time, you can pull it up and you know you can stitch the neckline to the base of your gown and also turn the sides. Okay. So let's just go to the sewing machine and sew that. And I'll come and show you what it looks like. So I also did something for the other side. 